Hello, I greet you, and I greet you in the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It often happens in life, and we have experience of what I'm going to say, that we start a good habit, perhaps even a holy one too. But then, for some reason or another, or perhaps for some excuse or another, we discontinue. So it's good to think a little about the virtue of perseverance, that is, we continue until the end. We need perseverance to continue to grow in our perfect love of God. After all, you know that my main intention is to acquire or to grow, if we already have, a perfect love of God. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> as I am saying, we need perseverance to continue to grow in our perfect love of God. It's very easy to start and stop. That's very easy to do. It is a devilish temptation. Eh? A devilish temptation. The devil tells you, well, if you don't give up today, you will give up tomorrow. And why does he tell us so? He does that to discourage you on your way of perfect love. And if you succumb to this temptation, you will give up and stop because your mind would tell you, or perhaps your reason would tell you, well, <clears throat> if I am going to stop, I had better stop now instead of tomorrow, once I have to stop. To some, some saints who were very staunch against the devil, the devil tried to overcome them by discouraging them in their perseverance. The devil would tell them, today you have overcome the temptation, but tomorrow you will succumb, and if not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, someday in the future. With the idea that someday in the future you will, you will commit sin. In such cases, we need to tell, to tell the, dev, the devil, not because we need to speak to him, but we need to tell the devil, no, you are wrong. I don't fall today. I won't fall tomorrow. I won't fall the day after tomorrow. I will never fall in sin. I can do this by God's grace. God's grace is very powerful. It's so powerful that with God's grace we can win all temptations, always, immediately and easily. If you think you have a perfect love of God, but then you give up, it means that you didn't have a perfect love of God. You could have an imperfect love of God, but not a perfect love of God. A perfect love of God overcomes all temptations, even temptations against perseverance. When we are tempted against perseverance, that is, that someday we might not continue the good way we are living, We must remember that God's grace is stronger than temptation. And so we can continue loving God and continue to grow in our perfect love until the very end of our lives on earth. <clears throat> so, by the grace of God, we can love God with all our hearts as Jesus wants us to love God. And always, this is important, this word always, that is perseverance, not today yes, 
because maybe I heard a sermon and I was moved by the sermon or I attended some spiritual exercises or I went to a retreat and then after a few days everything will be gone with the wind. <clears throat> Therefore we need to increase prayers because I am putting emphasis on the power of grace and God gives us this grace when we pray. So we need to pray more. Today I need to pray more than yesterday and tomorrow I shall pray more than today. Trust in God. This is a very important advice. Trust in God. Doubts whether or not to continue, set them aside. With God we need certainty. Certainty, sureness, not doubt. Doubt belongs to the devil. With God we need to be sure. Anyone who has difficulties about what I am saying can post a question or a comment if you want in the comment section, you know where, on this video or any other video of mine. I have published many videos by now. I always see all your comments and I answer them according to your needs. <clears throat> now I pass on to our dear Saint John Bosco. And today I thought that now it's time enough to speak about the first photos that were taken of St. John Bosco. Now, the St. John Bosco lived in the 19th century. He was born in 1815 and died in 1888. So, do we have any photos, original photos of St. John Bosco? And that's why I called this video St. John Bosco's first photos. <clears throat> now, Saint John Bosco, how interesting it is to speak of God and of his saints. Saint John Bosco's word, the word, eh? word, had great power over Salesian clerics. Now, when I am saying clerics, I mean those preparing to become priests. That was the meaning it had. That is the term clerics. That's the meaning it had during Don Bosco's times. Today, according to the current canon law, by clerics we mean any person who has some form of ordination, eh? either deacons or priests or bishops. These are the clerics today. But in, in uh, olden times, so to say, uh, some centuries ago, uh, clerics were even lay people who had the tonsure and they wore also the cassock. And they weren't deacons and they, they didn't intend to become de deacons or priests. So that's why now I am referring to clerics, St. John Bosco's clerics, as those who were preparing themselves to become priests, Salesian priests, of course. So, on one occasion, after Don Bosco had spoken to his clerics of the oratory, because he loved them so much and he wanted to impart to them not only his blessings, but also great knowledge and experience that he had of God, an intimate experience of God. So, on one occasion, after Don Bosco had spoken to his clerics at the oratory, and then started, the clerics of course started leaving the conference room. One of the clerics approached another cleric and told him, I shall remain with Don Bosco forever. And you? And the other cleric replied, yes, also me. I shall always be with him too. A priest who was not a Salesian once asked a Salesian cleric, he met on the street, why do you stay down there at, in Valdocco? 
with Don Bosco. Valdocca, as you know, is an area in Turin where Don Bosco started his first oratory. And there is also the church of, dedicated to Mary, help of Christians. So he asked him, why do you stay down there in Valdocco with Don Bosco? And the cleric quickly replied, because with Don Bosco, we are glad, we are happy. The character that Don Bosco instilled in his clerics on account of the type of education he gave them was different from that of other clerics. One day, Canon Cesare Ronzoni, <coughs> so Ronzoni is a surname, this Canon, Canon priest, eh, priest, eh, this priest, his surname was Ronzini, Ronzini. His name, Cesare. Surname Ronzini, name Cesare. And he was a canon, canon. Now when you say a canon, practically it's an honor. A canon is a member of the chapter of priests headed by a dean, which is responsible for administering a cathedral or certain other churches that are state collegial churches. So, this canon, Cesare Ronzini, was walking down Corso Valdocco. It is still there, of Corso Valdocco. When you say Corso in Italian, it's a street, eh? avenue if you want. So Corso Valdocco would be Valdocco Avenue. He was walking down this avenue. When he arrived in front of St. Aloysius Hospital, there is a hospital there, he arrived in front of this hospital. This uh, canon, Ronzini, saw cleric Garino on the other side of the street. He signaled him to come over to him because he wanted to speak to him. The cleric, of course, crossed the road and came near canon Ronzini. Of course, when he arrived, Garino asked him what he wanted. Nothing special, said the canon. I wanted to know if you are one of Don Bosco's clerics. And of course Garino told him, yes, yes, of course, I am one of Don Bosco's clerics. And the canon said to him, I am very glad I guessed, and I guessed well. Because when I meet a cleric with that happy, sincere, and respectable face, I am never wrong if I think he is one of Don Bosco's cler clerics. And when I ask such a cleric, he always tells me he is one of Don Bosco's clerics. Canon Cesare Ronzini was a great admirer of St. John Bosco. These clerics, so when I'm speaking about these clerics, these clerics lived with Don Bosco in the Valdocco Oratory. Now, when I say Valdocco Oratory in Turin, in Valdocco, Don Bosco opened his first oratory. Then later on, he opened another one in, Val, in, in, in Turin, not in the Valdocco area, another area, in Turin itself, called Porta Nuova, an area called Porta Nuova, and he opened another oratory there. And then later on, he opened the third oratory in Turin again, in another area, in another zone, called Vanquilia. So this is the first oratory that Don Bosco had in Valdocco. These clerics lived with Don Bosco in Valdocco oratory and were very happy that Don Bosco lived under the same roof with them. These clerics, especially the elder ones, because you understand, eh? every year he had new clerics, and so the elder ones, eh? the elder ones, had been trying to take a picture, to take a photo of Don Bosco for a long time, but they ne were never successful. Sometimes a cleric tried to draw him with pencil and brush, but it was all in vain. Don Bosco's painting never matched, or drawing if you want, never matched 
his real physiognomy. His face in the drawing did not match his real face. In addition, no photographer managed to take a photo of Don Bosco, although Don Bosco, after much insistence and calmly tried to pose for a photo, everyone was shocked by this because, as you may think, photographers succeeded in taking photos of other people, but not of Don Bosco. No photo taken of Don Bosco was good, and more often than not, nothing of the photo would come out. Don Bosco was famous and known by many people. Eh? He was a public figure. And photographers were very enthusiastic to take a good photo of him, but they were never su successful. Never. There is a reason. Now I shall come to it. One day, they were talking about this issue of photographs of Don Bosco in the presence of Don Bosco himself. And Don Bosco told them, if my photo that you might take will be useful for the salvation of souls, for the salvation of souls, then yes, take the photo. But otherwise, don't do it because I don't need photos. For Don Bosco, that was the most important thing in life, the salvation of souls. As a matter of fact, you know, that his motto was, I say it in Latin because I know that some of you are very fond of Latin and you like the, the Latin language. After all, Italian, Don Bosco was Italian, derived from the Latin language, from the Latin. And Don Bosco used to put this motto written down in different places of the oratory and he put it in Latin. And in Latin it reads, da mici animas, cetera tolle. Very easy. Da, give, da, dare, da, give. Miki, to me, give me. Eh? Animas, animas, soul, souls. Give me souls. Cetera, we use it in our daily language, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and the rest, eh? the rest, cetera, tolle, remove it, take away, take it away. So I don't want anything else, just give me souls, the salvation of souls. That was his motto. And it is still the motto of the Salesians. Eh? Give me souls, take away the rest. Now, on April 29, 1861, so 1861, 29th of April, Don Bosco organized a course of spiritual exercises for the use of the oratory. They started at 3 p.m. and the preacher was Don Ciattino. Don Ciattino. Uh, this Don Ciattino, he was the parish priest of Maretto. Now, Maretto is a village in the province of Asti, so it's very easy to understand. There is, in Italy, there are 20 regions. One of the regions is Piedmont the capital of which is Turin. But in Piedmont, there are other famous and big cities. One of them is Asti. So you have the city of Asti in Piedmont, surrounded by a number of villages. Together, they form the province of Asti. Now, one of these villages was precisely Maretto. And this uh, Don Ciattino was the parish priest of that village, Maretto and he was to give the spiritual exercises to the youths of a deoratory in Valdocco. One of the youths, it's very interesting, it has to do also with this, uh, as I have started this video at the beginning, with perseverance. One of the youths who was attending these spiritual exercises took a decision or made a decision which he upheld until the end of the spiritual exercises. Namely, not to chat, 
during those exercises. You understand children and young people sometimes during sermons, eh? they speak to each other and they joke and they, you know, try to make fun of everything quietly, eh? not to be noticed by their superiors. But this, this youth decided, said, well, during the spiritual exercises, I, want, I don't want to chat. I want to concentrate on them, pray, and think only of God and of what the preacher is going to say. <clears throat> and he succeeded to do it, persevered at least for, that, for those four days, because the spiritual exercises started on, uh, on April 29, and they ended on the 2nd of May. So 29, 30, one and two, four days. They lasted four days. <clears throat> Now, something else with regard to these spiritual exercises. Before this, these spiritual exercises began, Don Bosco sent for two young people, two youths. They were Francesco Givarello and Giuseppe Dalmazzo. Francesco name, Francis, or Frank if you want. Givarello, Givarello his surname and Giuseppe, Giuseppe Joseph, his surname Dalmazzo. These two youths came from their villages to listen. That's why Don Bosco sent for them and listen to the spiritual exercises as well. And they came for the spiritual exercises. They listened to the exercises, prayed a lot, confessed to Don Bosco, and at the end of the spiritual exercises, they did not want to go back home, but wanted to remain with Don Bosco at the oratory in Valdocco. Don Bosco was going to tell them himself to, to remain with him, but the Lord and the Holy Spirit enlighten them to tell him themselves what they wanted instead of him telling them. However, Don Bosco told them to stay praying for some time, to be enlightened by the Holy Spirit on what to do, to, un to practically understand more the Holy, Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit's plan for them. After praying, they remained with the same idea, that of remaining with Don Bosco. So they joined Don Bosco's clerics, they became clerics. Later on, they were ordained priests, Salesian priests. As priests, whenever they spoke of their priestly and religious vocation, I am saying religious as well, because Don Bosco's priests were religious. They made vows, obedience, chastity, and uh, poverty. Not solemn vows, simple vows, but they were religious. They are religious. Salesians are religious. That's why. So these two, as priests and religious, whenever they spoke of their vocation, they always referred to the seed of their vocation. Huh? to the beginning, to the start, their starting point of their vocation, namely that moment when Don Bosco sent for them to go and listen to the spiritual exercises. I mentioned earlier how Don Bosco's clerics had tried many times to take a picture of Don Bosco but never succeeded. So, on the 19th of May, 1861, so we are in the same year, 1861, but this time 19th of May, it was Sunday, it was the Feast of Pentecost. You know, the church celebrates the Feast of Pentecost, 50 days after the re resurrection of Christ. And um, 
in Pentecost we celebrate the feast, we celebrate the feast of the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and upon the church. It was so Pentecost Sunday on the 19th of May. There was a man, Francesco Serra. Francesco in English is Francis or Frank. Eh? Serra is surname. This Francesco had been raised at the oratory. He entered the oratory as a boy. He was a boarder and he remained there. He got all his education from there. And uh, after when he left, he became a photographer. A photographer. Now, this Francesco Serra managed to take a photo of Don Bosco with the device called the gyrotype. I can't explain that. It's a device. It's a, what I may call it, an elementary type of camera uh, that it was used 170 years ago. All right? The gyrotype. And so this photographer first took a photo of Don Bosco alone. Just, you know, Don Bosco alone. Then a photo of Don Bosco with five youths. And then Don Bosco with 50 of his youths. Two days later, he took a photo of Don Bosco. Here in Confessions, Don Bosco agreed on these photos, much to Sarah's insistence. It was not easy to persuade him to take a photo. <laughs> But those photographs were to be used only for the oratory. And Don Bosco did not want anyone to make copies of them. So there were some who tried to make a copy of them in pencil and brush. But some of these photos that were taken of Don Bosco, the first photos of course, uh, I have included them in this video as well. But the problem with St. John Bosco's photographs was, was much deeper. When the whole story of the first photos of Don Bosco is unfolded, it is said that Don Bosco did not want to come down from his room upstairs to take a photo. Uh, you know that Don Bosco's room was on the first floor. He had his room there. In front of his room there was a corridor with a number of chairs where people who wanted to speak to, to him came, they sat down, waiting for their turn. So Don Bosco was upstairs in his room. And one of the elder youths was a cleric, one of the elder clerics. So I mentioned this person as well in one of my past videos. He was Giovanni Cagliero, Giovanni John, Cagliero his surname. This Giovanni Cagliero was a cleric, then he became a Salesian priest. Later on he went to the missions, he went to Argentina with other Salesians. He led that mission, uh, uh, so to say, expedition uh, into Argentina. Later on he became a bishop. And later on he became a cardinal as well. But now he is still a cleric. He hasn't been a priest yet. This Giovanni Cagliero eh, went up to Don Bosco's room, knocked on the door, knelt down at Don Bosco's feet and begged him, begged him on behalf of all the children and youths of the oratory to make them that favor of coming out of his room and going downstairs for a photo. Cagliero told him that all the young people of the oratory would be very sad if Don Bosco passed away without leaving them with a picture of himself as they knew him in their lives. So Don Bosco then accepted and came down for a photo. But, what I am going to say is very important as well, according to Don Bosco's mind, but before posing for the photo, Don Bosco told the photographer Francesco Serra the following words. 
So what I am saying, Don Bosco is speaking, four times some families in Turin, after much insistence, wanted to take a photo of me, but no photographer succeeded in doing it. I recently went with some young people of the oratory to the best lithographer in Turin, Dubois. The artist did his best to take the most beautiful photograph of me, and even his workmen tried hard several times, but each time the photo did not come out. Everyone was shocked by the fact that they usually managed to take pictures of other people. While they failed every time, they tried to take a photo of me. I, Don Bosco, is narrating, I started laughing and told them, if you want to succeed in taking a photo of me, first go and make a good confession. Then come and you will succeed in taking my photo. They made fun of me and kept trying to take a photo of me. But every time they tried, they failed. It was all in vain. So much so that in the end, I, ha I was told to leave. What for remaining there? Because they gave up their hope of ever, of ever succeeding. And Don Bosco went on to say to Francesco Serra now, he is speaking to Francesco Serra, who is, so to say, ready to take a photo of Don Bosco. Don Bosco is speaking. Now, Francesco, I say the same thing to you. If you are in God's grace, well, take the photo. If you aren't in God's grace, do not try to take any photo of me, because you won't succeed. And it will be just a waste of time. Francesco Serra accepted and began trying to take a photo of Don Bosco. The first photo didn't come out very well. There was some idea, but it wasn't very well. The second came better, and the third one was excellent. As soon as they saw how good the third photo was, the young people that were there present started to shout, Francesco Serra is in the grace of God. Francesco Serra is in the grace of God. Here we see what importance Don Bosco gave to a soul in God's grace. And what a misfortune it would be for a soul that is in mortal sin, separated from God, and at enmity with him. Saint John Bosco did his best to help the young people of the oratory live in the grace of God and always be his friends. You who are listening and me, one day in heaven, together shall be, together in heaven, with the most holy trinity, but always by the power of God's grace. Give a lot of importance to grace, because when in a time we try to work on our own, without God's help, without God's grace. Don't do it. Do everything with God's grace, both material things and spiritual things, whatever they are. All right.